do I buy the latest phone that just came out, uh, latest phone that just came out um, a week ago, or do I wait um, to to get the next one that comes next year, or do I buy one from last year? I think I um, think from there I would like to start it off with a with a question. Hey, answering a question with a question. They call it a samanyika thing, but anyways, let's roll with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, so there is, there is, um, oh, actually the question I want to ask is uh, all, all three of us, uh, when we bought our phones, were they the current devices released that same year or were they devices released uh, in a previous year or two? I don't know, I'll just start with you, Valentine. Uh, t- talk to us. You, I think of the three of us, you were the last one to purchase a smartphone indulge us. yeah oh ah, yeah uh it was mine's a 2019 a30s so it's it was kind of newish when i got it because i think it was it came out in november um so yeah it it, it, it was new We're waiting for the well we got we got the announcement for the new uh samsung mid-ranges last week so yeah it's now an old phone mm, mm. Okay, so you bought it when? You bought it this year, last year? Uh, this year in March, I think. Oh, okay. So yeah, that was less than six months old. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. What about you, Rufaro? All right, so... So as for me, my man is away from the keyboard for a bit. Uh, but as for me, I have a Huawei P30 Pro, which was released uh, the first quarter. I would say the first quarter of 2019. I don't know which month exactly, probably around March, April. But yeah, Huawei P30 Pro uh, 2019. I bought it this year around April. So I would say roughly... I bought it. I bought a, a year old. Uh, what, um, reason being, well, the price seemed good, so yeah, I decided to just go with it. But uh, yeah, uh, that's me. Uh, Wait, quick, man's quick, back, quick Rufaro. Well, quick question for Rufaro. Oh, yeah, oh. oh, sorry, for, quick question for Rufaro Johnson. Uh, why did you go for Huawei without you know app support and you know? Um, it generally being the lowest tier of Android. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Rafaro, the man asked the question, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, reason why I bought Huawei is I'll get I'll just try and keep it like super short. So, um, I used a bunch of smart a bunch of smartphones before and. One of the earliest smartphones, one of the earliest smartphones, if not the first Android smartphone I used was a Huawei. It was a Huawei G730. Uh, it seemed cool. It was all right. Uh, there was nothing fancy about it except that the battery life was better than my previous phone and that the screen was bigger, but everything else, my previous phone was better. So yeah, wasn't really a cool experience. But um, after... I then I then sold that Huawei. Then I got a Huawei Ascend P6, which at the time was the world's slimmest smartphone. Yes, of course, it came with slightly more terrible battery, but apart from that, everything else was phenomenal. So phenomenal to the point that I installed a Chinese custom software just to experience EMUI 3.1. It killed a couple of things, but I didn't care because, well, the important stuff worked. But the experience I got from that Huawei was so incredible that I wanted another Huawei. Sadly, from there, Huawei's became so popular to the point that they were now, like their value didn't drop. So I couldn't afford the Huawei anymore. So I then ran along with uh, LG. Then for a bit, it was Sony. Then for a bit, it was ZTE. And L- back to LG again which is when I then upgraded to the Huawei that I have right now. So yeah, 
uh, all I can say is it feels good to be back. <laughs> yeah, well, excuses people make when, you know, they're using a phone of our Google Play services. Anyway, Rufaro, <laughs> what phone do you currently have? It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so sorry for the silence earlier, you know, being a dev, you can just get caught out of everything when things are burning. Nothing was burning, fortunately. Um, but yeah. So what phone am I currently using? That's the question. Um, I'm currently using yes. uh, OnePlus 7 Pro. Yes. Uh, you want to know why? I, I, I think I'm kind of excited to tell you why. <laughs> tell yeah, us. <laughs> Okay, so unlike unlike Ed, Ed is pretty much the unofficial Zimbabwean Huawei and brand and brand ambassador. Um, <laughs> for me, I'm not I'm not at the moment tied to a specific brand. I was sort of to Samsung because I had the Samsung um, Note One, Note Two, Note Three, and then I jumped to S Six, and then from S Six A Five um, twenty seventeen, and then from A Five I then came to OnePlus. So going from A5, it was a mid-ranger and I needed to get a flagship phone or I wanted to. Um, so then I had options and I was like, okay, Samsung, I've, I've been there, but then I wanted something different, something I haven't used. It had to be easily customizable, um, no bloatware, um, it had to be fast and also it had to have an all screen display. That was like one of the most important things that I wanted. So OnePlus pretty much ticked most of the boxes. And I was like, okay, um, let's try out this company called OnePlus. Uh, never used OnePlus before, got it. And and yeah, it's it's been great um, so far. It's been a year because um, I got it last year in December. And yeah, I, I don't think I would have got any other phone. Well, it's easier saying that now, um, but at that time, mm -hmm, I just, yeah. I mean, I guess the like interesting, a, like, yeah, the screen, it's, it's, it's all on the screen. <laughs> so I was saying, I was saying like, um, of, of the three of us, you two are the only guys, uh, that bought a phone, uh, within, well, before 12 months had passed after its release. So yeah, that's pretty cool. This shows how expensive mm -hmm. Huawei is. I, I, I couldn't up until after the P40 was released. So yeah, it was something. But the thing is, for me, it was also a ramp up period. So I went like three years or something using the same phone and I was kind of like saving up for that. So that also factors into like, and it was also on sale, that's the other thing uh, when I got it. So if it wasn't on sale, I, I don't think I would have, I would have bought it. Um, I might have still, I, yeah, I don't know. That's always a question. Eh? At what point do you say this is too much? Um, I guess this then feeds into our discussion of, okay, do I get an older device or do I get a new one? Because price then comes into play to like how much is too much or how much is it not then worth it to get the current one versus getting an old one? Yeah, um, there, there are quite a number of, um, you know, old flagship phones that are kind of still bang for value. Um, and there are a bunch of Android phones, like especially mid-range Android phones uh, that you can still, that you can get for older, that you can get. But flagship phones are the ones where you can actually get a reasonably priced old flagship phone with, which is still up to date. And my pick might surprise you because um, I've become something of a Samsung fanboy over the last six months, seven months. Um, but I owned this phone briefly uh, in 20... 18, no, 2018, yeah, early 2018. And I, I know all of you are going to roll your eyes at my pick, but it's the iPhone 8. Now, I know, unconventional pick, but like what I like about it is that it's still upgradable. Make it sound like phone. we hate iPhone. You guys do. <laughs> don't, don't try to sound diplomatic now. <laughs> you guys are <laughs> the biggest iPhone haters. Well, you know... Um, well, here's the here, here are my reasons for picking it. I think the upgradability of it to, I, to iOS 14 is, is is good. I think it's upgradable to iOS 14.2, which is cool. Uh, you know, you still get pretty much all the recent-ish features. Um, the phones, like iPhones, don't really change from generation to generation that much. Um, so you still get that very good build quality. You still get um, Apple's dependability. 
uh, because I've owned a bunch of Samsung in my, some Samsungs in my life, and there's a period in time where they just fall off. But iPhones kind of hold up really well. My iPhone 5S has been good since like 2016. Um, so, you know, I think value for money, like you'll probably get it for like, well, now 250 uh, at the most. Um, um, these are these are my prices. This, this is where I will start. 250 probably is the most I'll pay for. Uh, but the people will be selling it for more than that. But I think for that kind of price range, if you're going to go for a mid-range, yeah, you might as well consider if you want to get into iPhone or, you know, if someone has always wanted an iPhone, but you can't afford the higher end spec iPhones or the new spec iPhones because they're like so ridiculous, ridiculously expensive now, then yeah, it's probably worth looking at the, at the iPhone 8, especially the, the Plus. Plus is really good. The screen real estate is amazing. So yeah, so Apple, Apple really in terms of device support, they do, they, they, they're pretty much the gold standard. Um, so yeah, it does make sense to, to recommend an iPhone um, if someone's going to get an older device because support will be good. However, um, I, I wouldn't, re- I wouldn't recommend uh, an I- iPhone, not necessarily because I have anything against iPhones, um, but just because I've not used one for a long time. So me recommending something is just purely coming from or not used one in a long time. I don't think I've, I can say I've actually ever used an iPhone as a, as a phone that I use. Um, but so because of that, probably just then goes to Android, which Android now, yeah, uh, it would have to go back to Samsung because um, it's what I've used before and kind of understand. Um, and which Samsung in particular, really it can be, right now we're on the, we're on the S20s. Um, uh-huh. So probably the S10, um, that would be the previous one, right? Or or the Note 10 um, between those, but I'll probably lean towards the Note, uh, but then the Note is also not for everyone. So so there's that. But that's from, um, from I've used it before it worked. Um, I have I've not had any issues when I've had the Samsung and um, price wise, um, I wouldn't be too sure right now to be like, okay, would it be the best deal for you price-wise or you'd rather go for OnePlus uh, 7 Pro, which I currently use and it's last year. <laughs> so, so in a straight shootout, um, you'd still go OnePlus instead of the Note 10? So right now, yes, because I've used a OnePlus now, um, I would get the Except now it, it comes with an asterisk because because of that all screen thing. So the OnePlus 8, um, the current generation, um, they, they don't have an all screen um, display. So they added the punch hole camera, I think. Um, so in terms of aesthetics, if that was the previous one, I'll probably say no. Um, but then that's just a me nitpicking to be like, okay, I don't like that. So don't get it for that reason. But then really um, in terms of specs and a device holding up um, to its age as time goes on. I think OnePlus is the next um, thing close to, to iPhone outside of the Pixel devices, um, just because they don't have a lot of bloatware. Uh, so things get to degrade much less. Um, so it's almost like Pixel, um, of course, it would want Huawei well, to then come next. Um, Probably it would probably say Huawei is on top of Pixel, um, but then I would go Pixel and then OnePlus Huawei may be on the same level or something um, in terms of devices lasting longer, um, just because of that issue of, okay, how good is the software? Uh, because the hardware really across the devices is almost the same. So the thing then comes to the software, but okay, will it hold up or, or not? Interesting. Hmm. Thank you so much for <laughs> for mentioning me, putting me in the top <laughs> spot. I I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I, I like I like how both of you have been talking about the devices that you've used and experienced, and um, your wishes to to recommend those. Uh, I'm gonna go a slightly different route in 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 mention because I've used a number of phones, but I've also not used a number of phones. But I've also seen the price drop of some phones that just makes them such good value to get 
even though they haven't been used. So part of the reason why I got LG uh, after getting after after I was done with the Ascend P6. So the Ascend P6 is what I, it was actually a storage issue that forced me. No, it was a storage and software issue that forced me to look for another phone because uh, some apps like Facebook were not were no longer running, saying that the the operating system is too old. Uh, and it came with a 16 gig internal storage, which oh, actually it was an eight gig internal storage, which was uh, very little for the type of user that I am. And that's one of the heavy ones. So I then went to LG because at the time, LG was offering fantastic hardware. And again, at the time, fantastic software, um, but it, somehow wasn't getting the same appeal as other devices on the market. Uh, partly it was because of their LG G3s and G4s boot looping. That was, that was a thing. But they were amazing value in terms of what you would get for the money. And that is why I got the LG G4. It then died on me. And then I went on Samsung, sorry, not Samsung, Sony. And, uh, then I went to another LG, which didn't die on me. In fact, I still have it up to now, like almost four years later. Still works. Um, Price-wise, LGs, like I mentioned, they come with a very fantastic value for money proposition. So if you are looking for a smartphone, I'm biased towards flagships. I don't want to use a phone knowing that there's one that's better than it in that same class. So um Flagships all the way, I would say the LG, um, the LG G7 G8, as well as the V40s and V45s, uh, both of them, well, all four of them, they've got fantastic hardware. They've got fantastic cameras, fantastic software. I think the only part where they lag a bit behind with other brands that I shall mention after them is on battery. Uh, they have slightly smaller batteries, so topping them up will be a bit frequent, but everything else, it's on point. The build is solid. They come with their so-called military standard shock drop resistance. So that's cool. And then what I, what I usually recommend a lot of people, AKA what I usually buy other people if they decide to, you know, convince me to buy them devices is Huawei, as Rufaro said. Um, Huawei, because for me personally, through my own experience, their processors are kind of more resilient than Snapdragon processors over time. So um, they still, uh, to some extent, maintain better performance after a certain period compared to Snapdragon ones. They are kind of like toe-to-toe -to -toe when they're both still new, but use it after two or three years. And yeah, the Huawei somehow just still seems faster. Then the other one is Huawei doubled down heavily on battery as well as, uh, as well as battery management. So their phones are super good on battery. And then, well, the star of the show me is their cameras. Huawei has been, has been doing things in the camera department as well. So if you want something that takes good photos with, uh, I'll say with minimum effort, I don't know how minimum it is compared to other brands like the Pixel, but yeah. Uh, taking photos with minimum effort, I would recommend Huawei. And um, other brands, honorable mentions are Sony. Sony is one of those weird brands that doesn't drop in price a lot. So <clears throat> they're a bit difficult to recommend, but if you can get like something like an Xperia uh, XZ, their naming system sucks, but those ones are fantastic as well. Uh, for the money right now. They're like two, three-year-old flagships. And uh, and then iPhone is also a good one in terms of software support. They, they, they are the gold standard when it comes to software support. So I would say right now, recommending anything from an iPhone 7 going up um, for someone who just wants an iPhone that works who's not too particular, but a lot of stuff. One, uh, you can get the iPhone 7, iPhone 8. For someone that wants a bit more, then you can go for the iPhone 8 Plus and X. 
I guess those ones will be cool. But again, I'm biased towards flagships. That's why I'm saying big phones. <laughs> uh, Samsung is also pretty good. You can now get like the S9s, Note 9s uh, for very good money. Like they have very good value right now. Uh, I'm, I'm personally not a big Samsung fan, which is why it's like almost bottom of the list. But Sacrilege. Uh, Sacrilege. <laughs> but oh, man. hey, man, like <laughs> people have Don't preferences. Like that, Don't disrespect Samsung like that, man. It's not Huawei. Like Samsung is... is... <laughs> No, no, we, won't, we, we won't dive too deep into that, but they are offering like really good value right now, especially if you go for those, uh, those I would say ninth gen Samsung, the S9s and the Note 9s. Very good devices, very good hardware. Uh, I think they're still getting software support to like the new uh, One UI 2 point something and One UI 3. So if that comes through, it, it even looks better as well. So um those ones are fantastic. Um, so the brands that are that I just listed are brands that are commonly found in my region in Zim. So I'm pretty sure in other markets there are other more fancier brands like Oppos, like Realme's, like Xiaomi. Yeah, I was about to say that. How come we didn't mention Xiaomi? Well, I, I have never liked I, one of these. I mean, it is <laughs> well, locally available. Uh, no. Yes, it is yeah. locally available, but only mid ranges are available locally. So your Redmi Notes, your Redmi Sevens, and uh. it's difficult to find. Like it's a unicorn if you try to look for like the Mi Eights, Mi Nine, Mi Mixes, Mi uh. Mixes. Yeah, those ones. I can mention. I can literally mention one or two shops that I know they have, and nowhere else will you find them. So. Uh, since I'm talk, I'm biased towards flagships. Didn't really include it because most of the uh, Xiaomi's that are available are not flagships. Mm -hmm. So, interest, something interesting that you mentioned um, just had me have a question. So, you said the ninth um, gen of Samsungs. So now I'm wondering, um, how old is too old? So that's like three years back, <laughs> no? Like. In, in yeah. my view, I'm like, hey, that's that's a bit too far to 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 be buying um, a three-year-old well. flagship now. Um, it makes sense <laughs> to buy the latest now and keep it for three or five years, but not to buy one from three or five years ago. So where, where is that sweet spot where we're like, okay, uh, once you cross this number of years, it's cheaper, but uh, yeah, it's not going to be worth. Uh, okay, you get a better deal performance, price to performance ratio by buying uh, less old flagship. I think that's a, that's a very three years. I think three years is probably fine. Like if you're looking at 2017, probably would be a good sweet spot to hit um, uh, because um, generally all the all the phone makers have gotten a lot better with keeping you up to date with software. Um, so you'll be fine for a year or two, I think. I think I'm not sure about Samsung. They are sometimes very bad when it comes to um, giving you new updates. I know I just spoke I spoke against Samsung, but yeah, it's, it's it's one of those things that they don't really do well. I think going over three years is just pushing it a little bit. I think if it's if you're buying a device that's over like three years old, is probably for someone who's it's their first device. So whatever it is, they're going to enjoy it. You know, either way, if it's buying it for a kid or buying for someone who's never really owned a smartphone. I think yeah, in that range of of, of um, Three years and above probably would be good because um, they wouldn't really mind and you know just keep discovering and exploring and then you can upgrade it in two or three years for something you know a step back again because your phones are expensive and if you know trying to dial it in closer is sometimes especially with Zimbabwe the way it is now I like if anyone wanted a phone for a Christmas present from me uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was that was actually going to be part of my response as well. Um, the sweet spot is such a tricky place considering where we are at and the type of person that will be looking to buy a smartphone. So for us, uh, the enthusiasts, you would want to get as recent a phone as possible just so that you can enjoy more like software support, software updates and the like. Um, but yeah, Valentine, Samsung's been actually reasonably cool when it comes to updates. I saw... 
uh, I think the Note 5 is going to be one of the devices that will be getting the One UI uh, software update. So to me, that was like, wow, that's, that's a very old phone. <laughs> still getting updates so so yeah like samsung is trying to i think because of whatever it is that's going on between america and huawei they're like hey let's just make people happy and lock them into the samsung ecosystem but story for another day for today um the the time i don't know three years sounds like it's a decent place to be but again it depends with the software support and the hardware capabilities of the device. So for example, when we look at hardware, hard, hardware capabilities of the device, I'm speaking of stuff like how the processor holds up over time and how the battery holds up over time. So uh, again, I'm sorry for Samsung, but Samsung previously was notorious for their batteries uh, quickly degrading. Um, and that is something that would make them make it hard to recommend for someone who wants to buy like a three-year-old flagship because probably the battery is degraded so far that it's now almost unusable. Um, something that, um, again, unfortunately, that's the best example I have. Something that Huawei has been good at is maintaining battery health over time. And so that is something that you might want to consider when you are picking a phone from way back. What's the history of these phones? I mean, most probably these phones are already in the market. There are already people using them. So getting a feel of them from guys who are already using them will give you the sort of idea of, is this a good phone to buy three years after its release or I'll rather go with another. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Three years, I think, is pretty is a pretty cool place to 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 go for enthusiasts. Mm. That is okay. So three years for enthusiasts, and then yeah, five years for the general. Um, interesting. 